What's up guys, welcome to the channel. On this episode, we are continuing on the C10 electric truck build. Last episode, we had the bed hung, the front end situated, and Donnie boy was finishing up the floor. As you can see, it's still a little bare. We have some more brackets that we're gonna be working on first. So we have to tie the cab to the actual chassis. We got these two supports back here. So we're probably gonna break a piece of 16 gauge and then come straight across and then start working on the footer board. As you can see, it's nice and flat. No need for a transmission tunnel. I feel like we should build one for it, just for the style. Or some sort of like a tunnel coming down that goes back to the back seat, you know, almost make it like a little Ferrari. So by the time this video drops, we might still be deliberating. Yeah. So comment below if you think we should put a transmission tunnel in for good measure or leave it flat. But for right now, Donnie's gonna cut out these old braces right here. Yeah, this was the crossman that went through the floor. I'm so weasel it out. We got some four by fours that we're gonna be welding in place to tie into these frame rails. We're gonna continue to tie all this cab into the sides of the actual chassis because this is going to be a unibody when it's done. What that means is the cab and the chassis itself are gonna be one. Kind of like a Datsun, like an early- Like a Nova. Uh, like a Nova or a Camaro. It's gonna make this thing extremely stiff and you get a lot more road feel as opposed to just a body on frame and the thing's just flopping around. He's getting fond doodled over here. I got the frame prepped on each side. What we're gonna be doing is wearing this square tubing from here to the inside of the actual body of the C10. I had to cut out some schmegma in here. So both sides are prepped. I'm gonna go ahead and acetone. Then I'm gonna run a MIG bead, top, bottom, and side. This will actually hold the body to the frame that we're building so far. And then the back, as you see, we got those other beams in. I'm gonna make the back of it. I'm gonna zap them on in, and then we're gonna move on. That's dedication, folks. <laughs> Smoke in my chest hands over here, guy. Your embers! Oh my god, dude. You're still burning. We are making some still panels. So this is gonna get broke down here for the floor. It's gonna come down here. But we have this really weird gap over here that we gotta figure out. So what I'm doing now is cutting a template, and I'm gonna fill this in and have it right in here, fill this gap, come straight, and then triangulate this piece, and then I'll clean everything up and weld it in. I have got a angle gauge, which I already kind of figured out the angle for the inside. And from there, I'll just square all this up and then fill it in and get this and trim it up. From there, I'll trade it over to the sheet steel, cut it by hand, and then I'll weld it in. And I'll make some really cool X braces here to kind of go to almost like a roll cage. I'll have a eighth inch, six by six inch plate, come down to this little square tubing right here. So these are inner pieces that we made for that rocker. This is gonna add some structural rigidity to the actual cab itself. What we're really gonna do to get this thing stiff is make some four by four inch plates out of eighth inch steel, cut them on the plasma, and then what I'll do is I'll TIG weld it onto these after I get this in there and formed, and that will give us the rigidity to run a little X brace to the center of the cab. So we got it all loaded up. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting it up. Check this out. We got Timmy over here on the plasma. We showed you the mounts we made to get the cab on. Those were all welded in. And then from there, we did the closeout plates back here. All bead rolled and looking fresh. So now's the cool part. We're actually gonna build the floor and break it back here. This is gonna settle on our mounts that we made. We already cut the back piece out. We're gonna have to cut it in half and build forward, like I said. We're gonna hide all the pretty work that we did in here, which is kind of sad, but I'm stoked. Now we're gonna cut some tubes and cut some plates and weld and hammer on down to Clown Town, y'all. Johnny! Yo! Go turn out the lights! So shift in focus to the bed now. We are trying our best to get this thing nice and straight. Can't see the lasers when the lights are on, so we put the lights down. 
Thankfully, the cha-ching sign acts as a perfect backdrop to see just enough light on the fender and on the bed of the truck. I was measuring a million different angles on this thing to try to get it nice and flat and level and all that jazz, and it's just proving to be difficult. And I forgot we have a Bosch laser to actually get this thing nice and centered up. So the Bosch laser will act like a actual gauge and be able to tell us where we need to be. We had this six foot level here. The bubble was a little off. I was kind of nervous about that. So we have the laser set up and now we have the bed nice and flat. Now we know we can get this thing exactly where we need to be to be able to start making the mounts and have a little more confidence. So we can call it a day on this bed, getting it all leveled up. So now we have some welding, some cutting to do guys. So the first thing we have to do is grab these two points here, which are the factory mounting points for the bumper. And we're gonna use these one by twos and tie it into the chassis. This is gonna give some strength to the back of the bed. And then we're gonna come here with angle iron, weld that all in. And then we're gonna put a lot of strength on the back side of the bed where it's closest to the cab. So let's get these things in first and then we'll start working our way around and getting this bed nice and situated on this electric truck. So our rear lateral bars are in. This is gonna create some support for these braces that actually grab the back side of the bed. These are not under load. These are gonna be actually like tension bars, like a bridge. It's pulling this way, so that's gonna stop these from bending down if there's ever a load in the bed or just the weight of the bed itself. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie in these angle brackets that we made yesterday. And we're gonna come right down to the corner here and just give a little bit of strength to the corner of the bed. Once that's situated, the whole back side of this guy is pretty much done and we're gonna shift our focus to the front side of the bed. Once we do all that, this thing should have some strength to it. Right now it's kind of still got a little wobble wobble, shaky shaky, especially in the front here. But we have plenty of bracing on the floor that we'll be able to tie into. A lot of hardware there that we're gonna repurpose that originally bolted in the bed floor for the C10. Whenever you guys are fabricating or working with anything like this, if you can repurpose already existing hardware that they gave you from the factory, it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to fabricate and make the process a lot quicker. We have all our rear bracing pretty much welded up. Everything is tacked in place on the side supports because unfortunately we're gonna have to make these bolts in and out. So I got these two by one angle brackets that are gonna bolt under here. What I have to do is I have to clearance though right here, cut a little bit out so that this angle will slide in there. I thought about just making it all solid, welded in, looks really cool, but the bed rolls in underneath this bracket. There's gonna be two at the front and one at the very front, making five total. Sometimes I sit and count all day. So we're gonna go ahead and knock these tacks loose, cut these on the bandsaw, and then be able to weld our angle iron pieces in and then get them through bolted. We have our angle brackets in just like we did in the rear of the bed for our support braces. We have two constants though that are going to hold the frame of the bed up. So it's gonna rest on that and then those two side braces bolt in and then hold the bed sides in place, stop that floppage. We're gonna do the same thing up here, except we're gonna go a little more robust with the bracing because a lot of the weight's gonna be more towards the front. So we have this eighth inch two by two angle and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some square tubing and stick it right underneath it and through bolt it. I'm gonna cut a piece of square tube. I'm gonna build two verticals to be able to hold it up. So you basically slide the bed in and then just drop it down. And then you have the four pieces that actually bolt in. So I'm gonna do a little shake test after that, see how it looks. But if it's nice and solid, it's gonna be good to go. I can be able to cut the supports away and let it hang basically on the chassis. We have our two by two tubing all welded up. Our down braces are welded in. We got five bolts holding this thing in. As soon as I tighten that up and I welded that piece in, this bed got super sturdy. So no more floppy floppy. It's actually probably good where it's at right now, but I'm going to add a couple more braces just because I like to go overkill. On top of the fact that if we did ever have any situation on track where it kind of bumped in anything, we want to have some support there. So. The bracing in the back corner is pretty spicy, one inch. But in the back, I'm just gonna add some braces because just to some floppiness right here. Nothing too crazy. Once those two brackets are done and in, this bed mounting process is pretty much done, except for the fact that we have to put a, a bed floor. So let's go ahead and weld up these braces. Oh, 
Hi, I'm Sarah McLaughlin. Will you be an angel for a helpless animal? Hey, Dad. That's what you did to me with a freaking welding wire. The bed is finally done. We have our support braces in. Everything is looking really good. It's looking like more and more of a race truck as the days go by. This thing is nice and solid. As we said before, we're gonna do like a little shake test and it passes pretty good. We have our four braces back here with a massive ledge that this thing's gonna sit on. So when we go to take this thing apart, whenever we need a service, we just have these four braces on the front, two big ones in the back, and then you undo your hardware front and rear and the bed just lifts off just like it is in the factory. As you can see, there's a lot going on in there. We have a lot of wiring, cooling system, and stuff that still needs to be added in. But simultaneously in this episode, we've been trying to do double duty. Donnie's got the interior kind of buttoned up. Donnie, where are we at with the sheet metal? I see you have some panels down. It's looking more and more like a floor as the days go on. We actually made these uh, still panels in the back. You B-roll them, this is gonna cap off the back of the firewall, the rear firewall, you would say. Yeah. And then I made these end plates over here that tie in that were B-rolled, which you guys saw. And I just finished welding that one in and blended it. Now I gotta finish TIG welding this and blending it. And then from there, Timmy had a cool idea. We're gonna bead roll something in the front, make some sort of a center console that comes down to it, and then we have to wait to get our seats so we can make seat mounts tied to the chassis itself. Yeah. That it's way. gonna be pretty important because this thing's gonna have a ton of power, so. Like Donnie was saying, the sheet metal is all kind of cosmetic. It's gonna keep the driving compartment separated from the outside elements, obviously. But this thing's gonna have a tremendous amount of torque. We're thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of like 3,000 foot-pounds of torque with these twin large drive units from Tesla. So we're gonna do our utmost to build this seat bracket into the chassis itself, into the strongest parts of the floor so that the driver and passenger are real safe and Donnie's gonna flex some skills some roll cage really soon. Our next step, obviously, is we have to start making the center console. Donnie's gonna finish up the rear, and I have to start making our rear diffuser. I'll explain what that is in the next episode, but thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and we will... Toodaloo boo, later. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the next episode, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Toodaloo boo.